So what are the top 10 beginner tarantulas that you might be overlooking? Well, keep watching to find out. Welcome to the Tarantula Collective. My name is Richard, and if you enjoy videos like this, as well as species-specific care and husbandry videos, then be sure you hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to click the notification bell to turn on all notifications so you don't miss any videos I upload in the future. Now today we'll be discussing the top 10 beginner tarantulas that you may have overlooked. I didn't want to do a top 10 best beginner species like you've seen dozens upon dozens of other YouTube channels do, so we're going to do it a little bit different. Come here, I'll tell you what I'm talking about. Now what I was wanting to do with this top 10 list is instead of repeating the same top 10 beginner tarantulas a lot of other people have already put out there, I am going to do the top 10 tarantulas that are good for beginners that you may have overlooked. So right out of the gate, I'm going to tell you about some tarantulas that make great beginner tarantulas, but you've already seen suggested so many times. So for those of you playing at home, these are the top 10 great beginner tarantulas that won't be making this list. A great tarantula that's not going to be included on this list because it's on everybody else's list usually is going to be the Avicularia Avicularia. The second tarantula that makes a great beginner species that I won't be including on this list is the Gramistola Rosea or Porteri. Third tarantula that won't be included is going to be the Brachypelma homori. Also not going to be on this list is the Titilicotyl albopilosum and the Vaughans. That's the curly hair tarantula and the Mexican red rub tarantula. Both great beginner species, but not going to be on this particular list. Another great tarantula and one of my all-time favorites that I'm not putting on this list of tarantulas that you may have overlooked is the Gramistola pulchra or the Brazilian black tarantula. Another favorite that seems to be on everybody's top 10 beginner list is the Lociadora periabana or the salmon pink bird eater. So that one I won't be including. Now this species I highly suggest for anyone getting their first tarantula, but since that's not the aim of this video, this list will not include the Gramistola pulchripes or the Chaco Golden Knee. Now some people may get upset because I'm not including this species on the list because they were last time I did a video like this, but it's the Acanthoscuria geniculata. A great tarantula, very hardy, but highly suggested as a beginner species, so we're going to skip over it this time. Now this species may not make the best beginner species, but I see it on a lot of people's lists, so I'm going to make sure to exclude this one straight off the bat, and that's the Nondu chromatis. Now this is a species I probably suggest the most often when people ask me my opinion on what a great beginner tarantula would be. But because I suggested so much and it's on so many other top 10 lists, I'm not going to include it today, but that is the Afonopelma calcodes or the Arizona or desert blonde tarantula. I love this species and I highly recommend getting one of these, especially if it's your first tarantula. But since we're focusing on species that a lot of people don't even think about, I couldn't really include it on this list. So we're going to start off this list with a tarantula that usually doesn't make anyone's best beginner species list. Part of that reason is probably because it's a fossorial tarantula. Not many people show a lot of love for fossorial tarantulas, especially as beginners, and part of that is because you don't see them out in the open a whole lot. Now, like all the tarantulas that are going to be on this list, this is a new world tarantula, but it is a burrower, meaning you'll need to provide it with very deep substrate. But the cool thing about this tarantula is that as spiderlings, they almost exhibit an arboreal tendency. So you get to see them out a lot when they're very young. So number 10 on the list is going to be the Ephibopus cyanothagus or the blue fang tarantula. 
Now, as I mentioned, this is a burrowing tarantula. They have a medium growth rate and they come from French Guiana. They need a little bit higher humidity than most of your other tarantulas and ventilation is important for this species. This tarantula can be a little defensive and is fast moving, which is why it's at number 10 on this list. The coloration of this tarantula doesn't even seem real sometimes. It's so bright and iridescent. Now for number nine, we got a tarantula that I've never seen on anybody's list. And I think part of the reason many people don't include this one is because they can be a little difficult to get a hold of and sometimes they're a little expensive. Now this is a new world arboreal tarantula that comes from Brazil. It has a medium to fast growth rate and can get up to about five and a half inches. Now this species also has a kind of interesting defense mechanism where it will shoot its excrement at you as far as a couple of feet. So the number nine tarantula that you may be overlooking as a beginner is the Ibirapora diversepes or the Amazon sapphire pink toe tarantula. Now these tarantulas are fairly easy to keep. I keep it just like I keep my avicularia avicularia or the carabina versicolor. They just need some leaves or sticks, branches, something like that to use as anchor points for their web tunnels. They do require a little more humidity than some of your new world terrestrials, but that's very easily achieved by placing a water dish at the base of their enclosure. Now, if you think the avicularia or the pink toe tarantula is a good beginner species, then you shouldn't overlook this one as well. They're a little more difficult to find available for sale, and they're gonna be a little bit more expensive than the avicularias, but they are a gorgeous tarantula and very beautiful, and they change colors drastically with each molt. So it's a lot of fun to watch them grow from slings. I really enjoy mine and it's a juvenile, actually almost a sub-adult. It can be a little quick, especially during a rehousing. They can bolt pretty quickly and they can jump, but it's really nothing to be worried about. I'm more worried about it shooting the poop at me than I am like getting bit or it escaping. And that's just because I don't want to change my shirt. <laughs> now the number eight tarantula on this list is one of my personal favorites. I'm in love with this entire genus. And I think that I've got pretty much every species that is available for sale here in the US. You can't really go wrong with this tarantula, but the reason it's not higher on the list is because it is a small dwarf tarantula. They're fairly inexpensive, but they can be a little quick. That's why I didn't rank them higher on this list. But there aren't many tarantulas that have such cool coloration as this species. Of all the species in this genus, this one is my favorite. So number eight is gonna be the Cirrocosmus rite, or the Peruvian black and white tarantula. Now this species is endemic to Brazil and Peru and is very easy to keep, just like any other new world terrestrial. Now as spiderlings and juveniles, they do like to burrow a little more, but once they get near their adult size, they spend a lot of time out in the open. This is a very docile species and I usually have no problems with them giving me a threat pose or trying to kick hairs. In my experience, they're not very big bolters. They don't really wanna run out of their enclosure. If they feel threatened or disturbed, they'll usually just run into their burrow and hide. And one of the main reasons I think that this is a great beginner species isn't just because it's so docile, but because it has such a unique and beautiful color pattern on it and they're probably some of the feistiest tarantulas out there. They will tackle a cricket or roach their own size with no problems. So it's a lot of fun to watch them eat. Now this next species is really cool and it's not one you hear a whole lot about anymore. This tarantula is endemic to Trinidad and the West Indies and it has these very bright greenish bluish legs. And my favorite part about this tarantula though is its abdomen. It has this almost iridescent greenish blue sheen on the abdomen that's unlike pretty much any other tarantula out there. Now they are a dwarf species which turns some people off. They grow to about three to three and a half inches as adults. They're a new world terrestrial tarantula and they're fairly docile which is why I think they make an awesome beginner species. If you haven't figured out which tarantula I'm talking about yet, for number seven, I'm choosing the Holothel Longpipes or the Trinidad Pink Tarantula. Now the couple that I've had have not been defensive at all. They've never kicked hairs or given me a threat pose. And they always prefer to run and hide than try to escape or show any type of defensive behavior. And they're unlike any other tarantula I have in my collection. So if you've never considered getting one of these tarantulas, you should definitely add this species to your list. They're so easy to take care of and so beautiful to look at. You won't be disappointed. Now this is one that I had all over the list from number one to number 10 and everywhere in the middle. I kept moving things around and in fact, most people won't include this on their list. Now this species temperament makes it a perfect beginner tarantula, but unfortunately they're very hard to come by and they are extremely slow to grow. I've had mine for about five years and it's still in like a juvenile enclosure. This is a dwarf tarantula from South America that has also gone through a name change very recently. 
You may know it by its old name, the Euphilus species red, but it is now the Homeomus chilenus, or the dwarf flame tarantula. With its deep black body and that bright red coloration on its abdomen, it is a gorgeous tea to observe. This is probably going to be the friendliest tarantula ever. Hopefully one day there will be more in the hobby, but there's not many out there, which means that when you find them, they're usually kind of expensive. So if you get a chance to grab one, I highly suggest it. Now the number five tarantula is a species that I did a Karen husbandry video on not that long ago. Now this is a dwarf tarantula, but it's got these amazing colors that is unlike any other tarantula in the hobby. I think a lot of the reason that this doesn't make people's top 10 beginner tarantula lists is because it can be a little feisty. When disturbed, they will bolt very quickly into hiding, but my favorite aspect of this tarantula is the fact that it can be kept semi-arboreally. So when it gets into its juvenile and adult stages, it will web up and burrow down. If you're not sure what tarantula I'm talking about yet, number five is the Hapalopus species Columbia. Now this tarantula is very easy to care for and a lot of fun to watch. As spiderlings, they tend to be more of a burrower, but once they hit that juvenile to adult stage, they really enjoy having things that they can web up. They're very brave tarantulas and they'll spend a lot of time just sitting right out in the open. Occasionally they may kick some hairs at you, but mine have never given me a threat pose. And one of the coolest aspects about this tea is that as spiderlings, they already have their adult colorations. So if you haven't seen my video on the pumpkin patch tarantula, I will link it right above here and I will put it at the end of the video so you can check it out. Now, if you've been following my channel for a while, this next species was one of the first Karen husbandry videos I ever did. And I think I said a hundred times in that video that this is my favorite species. Of course, I think I say that about every species I do a video on, but this one definitely sticks out as a unique, gorgeous tarantula. Now, this is a new world terrestrial opportunistic burrower that is a very heavy weber. It comes from Guatemala and Mexico and has striking red and black colorations. You've probably figured it out by now, but I am talking about the Guatemalan tiger rum tarantula or the Davos pentaloris. I think my favorite part about this tarantula is how extensive it webs. This is a very docile tarantula, so you don't have to worry too much about it kicking hairs or throwing threat poses. But I think the reason it doesn't make a lot of people's beginner lists is because they can be a tiny bit skittish. It's not really a tarantula you wanna handle very much because if it does feel threatened, it can bolt. But I've never had an issue with mine trying to escape its enclosure when I'm feeding it. And the rehousings are usually very easy. I just get it to walk from its old enclosure across the wall to the new enclosure. And this may not be the best first tarantula, but definitely your second or third, you gotta get one of these guys. Now this next tarantula is very similar to one of the species that I said I wasn't gonna include on the list. I think that it gets overlooked on everyone else's top 10 list because its cousin is so popular in the hobby. It's another new world terrestrial tarantula that comes from Central America. And actually I was having a very hard time deciding which tarantula to be at this spot. So I'm gonna split it in between two species of the same genus. So number three on the list today is gonna to be the Brachypelma, Amelia, and the Bami also known as the Mexican red leg and the Mexican fire leg tarantulas. Now these species have a lot in common with the Brachypelma homori, so anything that makes the Mexican red knee a great beginner tarantula makes these species one as well. They're very easy to care for, they're very hardy, and if you're picking up a spiderling or juvenile, they're usually not any more expensive than the homori. Now, this is another tarantula that I've made a Karen husbandry video on, and it's probably one of my top 10 all-time favorite teas. This will be the last dwarf tarantula on the list, I promise. Now, this is a new world terrestrial tarantula that comes from Panama and has some of the most unique colors and patterns of any tarantula on the list. It may not be the brightest or the shiniest, but it has this classy, elegant look that is just gorgeous. And not just that, its overall temperament is very chilled and relaxed. And the fact that when it's full grown, it's still pretty small, makes it a great species to introduce to children or people that are really afraid of the large spiders. So number two is gonna be what used to be called the Ami species Panama, but is now called the Nichinoculus species Panama.
Now this species is kind of new to the hobby. It's a little more rare, but they're fairly inexpensive with spiderlings usually being under $70. They're very hardy, easy to care for, and you can check out my care and husbandry video linked below in the description if you want a lot more information on this species. Commonly, they're known in the hobby as the gold-banded sunburst dwarf tarantula. And with this reddish, bluish gray and the spattering of a lighter white color on their abdomen makes them a truly gorgeous and classy species. Now mine is an adult female and I'm hoping to find a male one day so I can do a little bit of breeding and hopefully get a successful egg sac. I highly recommend this species. I don't think you'll be disappointed if you pick one up. It's so easy to care for, so docile, so gentle. I really don't know why it's not bigger in the hobby, but hopefully one day it will be. All right, this is it. We are at the number one most overlooked beginner tarantula. But before we get into that, if you want to continue talking about tarantulas in between these videos, be sure you join my Facebook group. I'll link it below in the description. It's a great place to ask questions and bounce ideas off other keepers. And if you want to pick up some Tarantula Collective merchandise, just visit my website, thetarantulacollective.com. You'll also find links to all the other social media platforms I'm on, like Reddit, Instagram, Twitter, Patreon, you name it. Now the number one tarantula on this list is an arboreal new world tarantula that is among the most gorgeous and vibrant tarantulas out there. I think a lot of reason that it gets left off people's lists is because its cousin is such a well-known beginner tarantula. And the fact that early in the hobby there was a lot of misinformation that suggested this tarantula needed to be misted every day. And I think those conditions led to a lot of problems and a lot of deaths. But I keep this species just like I do my avicularias. But these are very docile tarantulas and they don't even have the ability to kick hairs. They've got mild venom and they're not prone to bite. They can be a little quick and they may just jump if startled, but normally they'll just want to retreat to their web. And this is also a tarantula whose scientific name is probably more popular than its common name. And if you haven't figured it out yet, the number one tarantula on this list is the Carabina versicolor or the Antilles pink toe tarantula. Now I'm sure there are people that have listed this in their top 10, and after much debate, this one not only made the list, but climbed all the way to the top. The Avicularia Avicularia gets most of the love. Everybody wants to put just your basic pink toe as a great beginner tarantula. But in my experience, all the care and husbandry for the Avicularia is exactly the same for the Versicolor. I keep mine identically and I've had no problem and have raised multiple specimens all the way from slings to adults. Now if you don't have one of these docile beauties for your collection, I highly suggest it. My favorite part about this tarantula is probably the fact that when you get it as a sling, it's this bright blue color. And then with each molt as it grows, those colors will change and, and it'll get a more royal blue and get some very cool white stripes. And then it'll molt and all of a sudden it'll have these bright red hairs and this iridescent green carapace. It's just a lot of fun to watch. It's an amazing eater, it's a gorgeous tarantula, and it is the number one beginner species that you have been overlooking. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button, it means a lot to me. And don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. You can always follow me on Instagram and Twitter if you want to know what's going on in between these videos. And if you want to watch all the other top 10 list videos I've made, you can check those out right here. And if you'd like to catch up on all the past episodes of Tarantula Tuesday, just click right there. And if you decide not to do either of those, that's okay, because I will see you next Tuesday.